Moving on to what big money matters, Forbes has released its latest rich list. Chris Bishop is in studio with me now for a look at the Africans who made the cut. It's not you and I as always, Chris, no, huh? but well, we journalists, so hey. We're used to it, yes? <laughs> but this list has gone viral. I mean, we put it up online with CNBCAfrica.com uh, and something like 25,000 people went into it in the first sure. few hours. There's a lot of interest in this. 29 Africans on the list. Is that a new record? Well, um, it is actually, especially in the, in the main list. And it's interesting, there's been a few new entries. In particular, Mohamed Duji from Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, the man yes. who wanted to be the next Tiger Woods. Um, and president, uh, potentially, of Tanzania. I understand he's involved in politics there, too. He is, yes. He's, in a, but he's got the family business there, which deals in commodities and uh, also manufacturing. Um, and he's what he said, he took the family, basically, when he, he's, the story goes that he was working on Wall Street and yes. his father said to him, if you can't afford to buy your own new suits, I'm sorry, you've got to come home and work with me, Dar es Salaam. But he's taken the family business forward and uh, he's doing all kinds of things. Like, for instance, he's launched Mo Cola, trying to take on Coca-Cola, which uh, has been the graveyard of many an entrepreneur, including Richard Branson with his Virgin Cola. Mm -hmm. But he's um, gone from 900 million last year to 1.3 billion. Uh, and then one of his uh, neighbors as well, a guy called uh, Rostam Azizi, uh, he's also from Dar es Salaam, he's uh, in the telecoms man, he's got a billion. But um, the name of the top stays the same, Aliko Dangoti, but the story is, is that uh, he's lost 10 billion in value billion. since last year. And in fact, I was working it out this morning, he's lost 6 billion since Christmas when we ran the, uh, the list at the end of year, 50 richest Africans. Um, he's obviously invested in oil, and stocks, his stocks have fallen heavily. Uh, he's invested in commodities, and uh, his a lot of the Nigerians actually have been hammered on this list. If you look down, I mean, Mike Adenuga is a very known as a very savvy investor mm. in Lagos. He's into telecoms and oil, and he's dropped from 5.6 billion at Christmas to 4 billion now. Yeah. I want to touch on, on some of the investments that some of these billionaires obviously have. A lot of it is uh, entrenched is in oil, as you mentioned, but uh, the, the strong Egyptian representation that we see there, where are they making their money from? Well, it depends. I mean, a lot of in commodities, a lot of in manufacturing, a lot of them in telecoms, which is one of the great uh, money makers or has been over the last few years. Some of them are diversified. Uh, they manage to split their investments, so you don't get that incredible exposure. Oh. So something like when the oil price drops, then you start losing money. So... Um, it's quite, it's quite widely spread, but um, yeah, and there's um, also, it's interesting, all the people coming down, one of the people who's gone up the most this time is somebody who lives not too far from where we're sitting now, uh, Christo Visa. The, um, and now, as you remember, the fruit, he took in one of the biggest corporate deals that this country's ever seen. It was something like $6 billion. And he's an independent, non-executive director of a company called Steinoff, yes. which took over Pepcor, his uh, footwear and clothing company. Uh, and that's increased his wealth from 5.4 billion at Christmas to 6.3 billion now. He's now sitting in fourth place behind Nicky Oppenheimer, who's uh, dropped um, from 6.8 billion at Christmas to 6.7 now. So uh, it seems to be a fairly uh, sort of fluid situation, people going up and down the list. It's quite an interesting one. That's probably why it's gone viral. Exactly. Just on uh, the uh, calculations, I know you've always walked us through it, but maybe a reminder as to how the, you actually calculate the value of these individuals. Well, that's another point, actually. I was talking to one of our colleagues this morning uh, who's up in Lagos, and he was saying to me that he thinks the people who are getting the best valuation are those who are opening up their books. They were saying, come and check my wealth, look through mm -hmm. what I've got. Here's what I own. Here's what I fly. Here's what I drive and putting it together. And that's the way it works. I mean, people who want to be on this list have to open up their wealth and their books to us first here in Africa. And then there's a whole unit that works in the States, which verifies and combs through with a fine tooth comb through uh, people's valuations, also takes into account their debt. So you come up with this thing called net worth, which I would say is still most people, I think it's a conservative estimate. I mean, Aliko Dangoti himself said to me once, he said, oh, you guys have got me down 20 odd billion, but oh, I wow. own a lot more than that. There's stuff that you guys have never even looked at. It would be interesting to find out what that is if he can't feel a six billion uh, well, shift in his net worth. Well, yes, exactly. <laughs> but this is the p case in point. I mean, a lot of people are still quite wary of coming forward and saying what, they're, um, what, what they are worth. But if you look at it, 20 years ago, there was no such thing as the Forbes 50 um, richest Africans. And now look at it. Um, the people are lining up, etc. And this continent starting to find out a little bit more about what the people are worth and also how important business is oh. and entrepreneurs are 
to this continent. And I, I actually think it's a great thing. And I would actually appeal to all entrepreneurs out there to come forward, be honest, come out, tell us now, what are you worth? Be honest and tell us yes. what you're worth. Why it's not? interesting looking at the international list as well, because Bill Gates is still sitting up top yes. there. And it's interesting to see the relationship between these international billionaires and African billionaires. I think the Mutsipa Foundation, Patrice Mutsipa and Bill Gates are actually quite close. Yes, well, Aliko Dangote too. I mean, he's uh, got, but, and they say anybody who's doing business here knows Dangote. And, but also, it, they've got, they're in Washington all the time, they're in New York all the time, all these business types. But that's the great thing about it. Again, it's no longer this, this continent some sort of hazy place where people are not quite sure about. This continent is opening up a lot more. This continent is a lot more open for business than it ever was. And getting these names up there that people can identify, and people, because no, people not only read this list here in the continent, they read it all around the world. Mm. People they can put names and faces to. I think it's great, good for business in the long term. And also from a point of view of, of your average everyday uh, African aspirant businessman yes. is someone to look up to, someone to aspire to, I think. Exactly. Dangoti, Oppenheimer, as well as uh, the Ruperts, clearly big names to follow up on. Chris, thank you so much for your time today.